Hey, what's going on guys? My name is CarQ and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you three environmental kill credit tips, or as I like to call it, booping tips. An environmental kill in Overwatch is granted to you when you're the last person to hit an enemy with an ability that contains a knocker backer property before they fall off the map. Yes, knocker backer. I mean, what else are you supposed to call them? That has yeah, and there's up. actually, I wish I could remember some right now, but there are a few abilities we've tagged as uh, what we call it internally is set knocker backer is the actual set knocker backers. Like, we and it's like, Sounds like nickel actual, back, nickel backers. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so we could actually tag effects as this kind of counts as if I knock them back, even though it's not a knockback. And I, again, I can't remember, like maybe Roadhog Hook or, or Roadhog Hook or something like that has mm -hmm. that. So it's like, yeah, it's it's not technically a knockback, but it counts because it's similar. So then you get credit if you knock know, okay. that too. Okay. So that clip was me interviewing Jeff Goodman, the lead hero designer for Overwatch. And like he said, abilities such as Roadhog's Hook can grant environmental kill credit, even though it's technically not a boop. I've covered this topic in a video in the past, which should be popping out any second in the top right, but here's the short version in case you haven't seen it. Getting environmental kill credit with a knocker backer booping ability will grant you all the ultimate charge equivalent of that character's HP, including sound barrier. When you shoot an enemy as they're falling, you'll get a little bit of ultimate charge for your damage, but you don't get the rest. But if you understand your character's abilities and know which ones are coded with knocker backers such as melee or hack, you can gain so much more charge and improve your ultimate economy. So let's get into tip number one, a breakdown of all the knocker backer abilities in Overwatch. I spent hours and hours testing ability interactions both on and off stream, and I'm going to go over each hero very briefly right now. This is essentially the one knockback tip for every hero section of the video. Let's begin with a common knockback, the melee. Yes, if you melee someone, there is a tiny bit of knockback and will grant you kill credit. However, there are a few special cases. With Reinhardt, I marked it in red because the melee is his hammer swing, and you will need to directly boop them off for it to count, unlike the others. The other special case is Brigida, and for some reason they did not add the knockback property to her swing at all, which was very surprising to find after testing. With the common ones out of the way, here's the rest of the knockerbacker abilities in the game. Just to be clear, abilities colored in white mean that you can boop them while they're on the ground, and abilities that are colored in red, like Ryan's melee we mentioned earlier, must be a direct or mid-falling boop. And abilities with the prohibition symbol grant kill credit but no alt charge. I'll further elaborate what this all means, just hang in there, I promise to clarify any confusion as we go along. Starting with D.Va, her boosters can directly boop enemies off the map for kill credit. Eva also has her initial bomb path, which counts as a booster kill, but gives credit immediately in her baby form. You'd get to remech anyways after it explodes, so it wouldn't be practical to try to actually boot people off with it. Eva's bomb explosion is also a knockback, but you get no alt charge. Her remech animation boop is where things get interesting, because it grants alt charge, but will reward it to either baby form or mech form, depending on the time it takes for the enemy to fall off the map. So if it's a short fall for the enemy, they'll die too quickly, and you'll get the alt charge for the wrong form, as you can see as I slow down the footage. However, if you knock them off from high ground, the extra height buys enough time for the alt charge to be granted in mech form, which is much more optimal. For Risa, her only knocker backer is her halt, which needs to directly pull an enemy off to earn alt charge. If you pull someone, but they manage to touch the ground first, you'll get nothing. With Ryan, his charge will grant kill credit if he falls off the map with the enemy, or from a side boop. If the enemy lands back on flat ground and then walks off after the side boop, there will be no alt charge granted. Earth Shatter is a stun, but you don't get any alt charge for 2 seconds after it, so it doesn't really matter anyways. For Roadhog, kill credit for the hook only works if you pull them off the map directly, and Whole Hog doesn't grant any alt charge for blasting enemies off the map. Now onto Sigma. His primary fire actually does have a slight knockup. You can see Roadhog's belly slightly warp in the center. If you tag an enemy mid-air with them, it will count, but otherwise it won't, so that's why it's in red. Sigma's rock also needs to directly boop off map, and his ultimate gives credit, but no alt charge. Winston's jump pack has two knockbacks, one for initially jumping and one for landing on an enemy. In both instances, they need to directly tag an enemy mid-air before they fall. There was an old popular clip from Hangzhou Sparks Gushu gaining 43% alt charge by tagging an enemy Hammond player that rolled off the map, all from that initial jump pack boop accidentally. 
Primal Rage map boops don't grant ult charge, so I marked it with a prohibition sign, but there is something crafty we can do with it, which I'll address later in the video. Moving on to Wrecking Ball, his Grapple Fireball must directly boop them, and Pile Drive must pull them off the map, or at least pull them very close to the ledge and have them immediately fall off in order to secure ult charge from them. You do get booped from his mines, but you earn no ultimate charge. For the final tank Zarya, I've colored her gun icon half and half because her secondary fire needs to boop enemies off the map directly, but sometimes if you angle it correctly, you can still get kill credit even if they walk off afterwards. I'll explain why this happens later in tip number 2 in the video. The other knockerbacker in Zarya's kit is her grav, but that itself doesn't grant ult charge. More on that later. Now on to the DPS hero, starting with Ash. Coach Gun must directly boop an enemy, and Bob can grant ult charge, sorta. While Bob shooting at people itself doesn't grant ult charge, the initial knockup from Bob will grant kill credit and ult charge if they so happen to fall off the map in one motion after they fall down. For Bastion, the only knockback besides his melee is his ultimate shots. However, you don't get any ult charge for these in his transformed state. For Doomfist, Seismic Slam needs to directly pull someone off the map, but it's so hard to do since they always get pulled towards you. Uppercut needs to directly boop, and so does Rocket Punch. I tested whether Rocket Punching someone against the wall for the stun, then walking off counted, but it did not, so I'm going to keep these three colored red. Doom's ultimate actually does have a bit of knockback, but booping them off the map with it grants no ult charge. And on to Genji, he has no knockback aside from his melee, however I included Deflect here and colored it yellow to represent that it's a special case. If you deflect an enemy ability that is a knocker backer, like anything on this infographic, the game will register it as Genji performing that ability. I'm gonna skip Hanzo since he's only melee and move on to Junkrat. His primary fire and concussive mines must directly knock enemies off. With Riptar, it technically does boop enemies if they're far away enough that they didn't die from its damage, but unfortunately no ult charge will be granted if you fall off. McCree's Flashbang is a fantastic knockerbacker ability because you don't have to tag enemies mid-air to get credit. If you flash someone on flat ground and they fall off afterwards, you'll still get credit. On to Mei. Surprisingly, if you freeze someone with your gun, the game will mark them with a knockerbacker, and similar to McCree's flashbang, if they walk off the map after, you will get all the ult charge. It only works on a full freeze, so just slowing them a bit won't count. With her ultimate, I tested whether someone getting frozen from that, then walking off after would be similar to her gun, but unfortunately not. No ult charge. And now on to Farah. Her gun looks really, uh... Uh, anyways, her primary fire and concussive need to boop enemies off directly or be tagged mid-air. I'm gonna skip Reaper and talk about Soldier. Now, Soldier's only knockerbacker ability is his Helix Rocket, but I colored it in half like Zarya's secondary fire because the same thing occurs. Most of the time, you're going to have to boop enemies off directly or hit them mid-air, but sometimes, if enemies get tagged by the splash at a certain angle, you can still get credit from flat ground. Again, more on this in tip 2. For Sombra, her hack counts as a knockerbacker. Sounds weird at first, but if you think about it, it would be odd if hacking a Farah or Mercy mid-air didn't grant you kill credit, and so that's why it was coded that way. Hack also works without tagging the mid-air or anything, which is why it's in white and not red. Her EMP itself doesn't grant alt charge while it's active, but if enemies walk off afterwards, you will get credit in alt charge. I'll revisit this in tip number 3. Now for the rest of the damage heroes, Sim, Torb, Tracer, and Widow all do not possess any knocker backers outside of their melee. The only thing I'll point out is Torb's melee only works if his gun is out. The hammer melee doesn't count. So that leaves us with supports. Let's start with Ana. The only ability that counts as a knocker backer is Sleep Dart. It makes sense to get kill credit if you sleep someone mid-air, but I left the icon in white because if you sleep someone on the ground and they wake up and walk off the map afterwards, you will still get kill credit and juicy ult charge. Batiste's got nothing besides melee, so let's move on to Brick. I left the first base blank because remember, her melee or hammer swing doesn't have any knockback. Her whip shot and shield bash, however, are knockerbackers and will grant ult charge if you tag them mid-air or boot them off directly only. And finally, we have Lucio as our last one, since Mercy, Mora, and Zen don't have anything other than melee. With Lucio, the only knockback he has is a sound wave, and it feels weird even saying that because I don't know a single person who calls it by its name since everyone just calls it boop. Anyways, Lucio's boop requires tagging the enemy mid-air or having them fall off from the initial knockback. Now that you know all the knockerbackers in the game, let's get into tip number two, how to counter or cancel all the knockerbackers. Currently, if you're tagged by a knockerbacker, the ways you can counter it and deny ultimate charge for the enemy is through the following. One, jumping. Two, change in elevation. 
3. Use a self-damaging knockback. Or 4. Wait 10 seconds. Let's elaborate on jumping. If you're tagged by a knockerbacker on the ground like McCree's flashbang, don't forget that you have to manually jump once before falling off to overwrite it. It's important to note that using movement abilities will not necessarily overwrite enemy knockerbackers. For example, Winston's jump pack is similar to manually jumping, but check this clip out. You can see I actually slept a primal raging Winston, and as you learned in tip number one, sleep counts as a knockerbacker. As this clip plays out, you can see he realizes his team is dead and jump packed off the map to regroup, but little did he know, he gave me 50% charge towards my next nano boost. <laughs> he leaped off! He f***ed up! Clip that, that's going in the video! <laughs> Moving on, let's talk about change in elevation. In other words, if you are temporarily airborne, but your two feet touch the ground again before you fall off the map, this will overwrite knockerbackers. So rewinding a bit to the clip we just played, if the Winston instead had jump packed up in the air but touched the ground first before falling, it would not have granted me ult charge. Additionally, if you're tagged by a flashbang again, for example, but walk over something like this, or this, you can see how there's that small little nudge or bump. Yeah, that's a change in elevation, and this counts as cancelling it. The elevation threshold seems to be about half a Torbjorn high, since I didn't receive alt charge on the examples on Junkertown and Nepal, but I did receive it on King's Row, which is only ankle high. Now this is the exact reason why in tip number one, I listed abilities in white and red. You'll notice the abilities in white don't elevate an enemy's feet but the abilities in red all change an enemy's elevation. With this knowledge, let me clarify Soldier Helix and Zarya Secondary Fire. You can see these abilities bump enemies slightly up and down, which is why you should try to tag an enemy off directly or mid-fall. However, you can hit an enemy at a very specific angle that doesn't end up lifting an enemy's feet and thus grant you ult charge for the enviro kill. Make sense now? Now here is one very unique example of elevation change canceling kill credit. I got slept by an enemy Ana, and then coach gunned off by the enemy Ash, which should give her 300 HP worth of alt charge, right? Since I was ulting as Brig. But watch it carefully again. Did you see it? As I was falling, I actually bumped into this little part of the canyon, and the game registered it as a change in elevation, and there was no kill credit granted. Pretty cool, right? So, what should you do if you're tagged by a knockerbacker and you're already falling off the map? There are a few heroes in the game that can completely overwrite and cancel enemy kill credit, and that's by using a self-damaging knockerbacker ability on themselves against the wall. This tip is actually very practical, especially in the Arisa heavy meta we're in to deny a ton of juice towards their supercharger. The following heroes can deny knockerbackers while they're falling. Sigma and his rock. Zarya and her secondary fire. Bastion and his ultimate. Farah and her primary fire and concussive blast. And Soldier and his helix rocket. It's important to note that the cancellation only works if it does both self damage and knockback, except Farah's concussive for some reason. So, Diva's micro missiles do self damage but no knockback, and Junkrat's mine does no self damage but gives a knockback, as a few examples as to why they're not on the list. Let's go into the fourth and final option for denying kill credit, and that is simply waiting 10 seconds. Don't need to go into too much detail here, as it's quite self-explanatory, you simply just need to wait long enough. Here's an old clip from Atlanta Reign's support player, Masa, who gets booped by the enemy Lucio. You can see he kinda just wall rides for a little bit after he got booped. He couldn't manually jump from flat ground, he's on the wall, so he hasn't changed his elevation technically, and Lucio possesses no self-damage knockback, and then at the end... Wow, is that still a boob killer? The enemy Lucio still got boop credit. Why? Well, if we time it, it falls just short of 10 seconds before the knockerbacker would naturally expire. That sucks, but now you know. And finally, we're gonna get into tip number three, which is using your ultimate to build your next ultimate. Whenever you use an ability in Overwatch, in most cases, you cannot earn ultimate charge towards your next one while it's active, apart from Hammond and Ash. Right? All the damage you do while in a Primal Rage, for example, doesn't earn you charge while you're in your angry, transformed state, but once you revert back at the end, you're able to earn again. Now here's where this tip comes in. What if we used the trick of securing delayed environmental kills with a hero's ultimate ability? 
Not every hero in the game has the potential to do this, but I've tested them all, and here are the ones that have knockerbacker abilities that allow you to earn post ultimate charge. Winston and his Primal Rage. Zarya, if you grab them against the wall or object that forces them to fall off the map afterwards. Ash's Bob, but only if Bob's initial knockup causes you to fall off. Sombra's EMP, which is bizarre. EMP lasts 6 seconds, and it goes by the 10 second knockerbacker rule I mentioned earlier. Therefore, after EMP ends, there is a 4 second window where you can get ultimate charge if the enemy forgets to overwrite Sombra's EMP knockerbacker. And finally, we have Mercy, kinda. Melee is Mercy's only knockerbacker, but the fact that you can fly in Valkyrie can actually allow you to very quickly chase down an enemy who's trying to tactically reset, then fly back up to a teammate. Now you may be wondering, wait, I swear there are other heroes with knockback ultimates like Diva Bomb, Earth Shatter, Whole Hog, but I tested them all, and most of them do grant kill credit on the kill feed, but they give no alt charge, either because it's too close to the timing of the ultimate, or it's just a straight up bug or inconsistency in the way that the knockerbackers are coded. Like, Roadhogs should work in theory, but it doesn't. Alright, well that about covers everything regarding environmental kills, boops, knockerbackers, or whatever you want to call them. I know it's a lot of information to swallow, but I hope the research done here has taught you something new, both for veteran and new Overwatch players. This has been a research project that I've been working on for like, I don't know, 8 months. And shoutouts to those who helped me film back in the day in January and helped me collect some data for the research. So yeah, thanks for watching. It really means the world to me that you guys are here supporting my content still. Uh, please support me by subscribing on YouTube, follow me on Twitch, I stream 5 days a week, and that's actually how you get a chance to be in these videos. Because uh, on stream, a lot of times, I will film my new videos in a custom game, and I get viewers and subs to participate, so make sure you go to twitch.tv slash carq, and follow me on Instagram, at carqgame, so I can sell you guys bathwater if the uh, video creation and streaming life doesn't work out for me. And uh, feel free to comment down below with any questions regarding the, the heroes that you main. I'll try to answer the ones that are most upvoted and add them into the pinned comment. Alright, peace guys.